Hi, y'all. Um, so I had a thought. If you wonder why exactly the video um, jumps, it's because uh, I have to look up to the top corner to pause the recording and then do an audio check and, and so on and so forth before I can actually start filming. And if I knew what I was doing, I would clip that off the beginning, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and we saw from the last video that I don't know how to edit things off the end, right? So um, <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about um, the motion of uh, charged particles in magnetic fields some more. Um, Specifically, um, we're going to look a little bit more at the um, the curvature that I kind of introduced in the last uh, video, and um, also look at how that's useful for um, determining um, what a particle actually is uh, with something called a mass spectrometer. Um, so, without further ado, let's see if I can get my uh, PowerPoint up and let's get rolling. All right. So this is just a reminder of. Um, the, uh, the equation that we have uh, for the force on a charged particle due to a magnetic field that force is equal to Q times V times B times sine theta. And of course, I want to draw your attention to the fact that um, this is an equation for magnitude. Um, and all of these um, should be uh, you know, positives. Um, you know, the only one that really could be a negative is probably the Q. Um, we can certainly have negative charges, and that's why we've got the, uh, the absolute value signs around the charge. All right. And moving onward. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the, uh, the path this charged particle might actually take when it enters a magnetic field. Um, so in this case, what we have is we have a charged particle, um, positively charged particle, that's moving to the right. Um, and it's moving in a magnetic field that's into the uh, screen. Uh, so remember those X's are like the, uh, the tail ends of arrows, so that's into the screen. Um, so we pull out the right hand, our right hand rule. And if I were a student sitting here um, watching this video, um, I would have my fingers directed to the right, and then my fingers, my hand has to be oriented in such a way, and keep in mind that as I'm doing this in the video camera, everything's flipped. Um, but my hand has to be um, oriented in such a way that I can curl my hand into the screen. Okay. So when I do that, my fingers to the right and I'm curling my hand into the screen, um, then my thumb is pointing upwards. This is why I filmed the video in the bathtub because um, uh, I think that's a better um, uh, kind of orientation for having uh, this kind of conversation. Um, we don't have the, the, the whole mirroring of the screen and so on and so forth. It's just a straight up video. Uh, but anyway, I hope you guys watch that and understand what I mean when I said the, um, the force here on this charged particle is going to be upwards. All right. So this thing is going to start to curve its pathway. It's going to start to curve upwards. And we can look at this maybe right here at this location. Okay, its velocity is that way. It's a positively charged particle. And if we think about our right hand rule again, okay, my fingers kind of go up this way. They curl into the board. You see the direction of my thumb. It's up and to the left. All right, the force on this thing is this way. And at any rate, this thing just kind of keeps going and curves all the way around until it gets to this point over here where it exits the field. And now it just kind of keeps going in a straight line because once it exits the field, uh, there's nothing acting on it. So it's just gonna obey Newton's first law. An object in motion stays in motion um, at a constant speed, and must act at, at a constant velocity, excuse me, unless acted upon by an outside force. Since there's no outside force, after it leaves the field, moves in a straight line at a constant speed. All right, so let's say that uh, that's, that's great and all. Let's, let's look at, um, uh, maybe something we could figure out um, using um, this idea of the motion of a charged particle in a magnetic field. So this is something called a velocity selector. Um, this is uh, important in a couple different areas in science. Um, one of them is, is a mass spectrometer, which can be used to determine um, what a particle actually is. Um, so it's a, it's a chemistry, uh, chemistry tool. Um, it's also used by anesthesiologists. 
Um, so used in the medical field too. Probably um, uh, other areas that I just am not familiar with. Um, one of the interesting things historically is that this same kind of idea of a velocity selector um, was um, used in the discovery of an electron. Um, so you guys might have heard of cathode ray tubes. Uh, that's the old style, big bulky TVs that your parents had when they were growing up. Um, cathode rays are actually electrons, but before people knew they were electrons, they were called cathode rays. Um, and something similar to this velocity selector that we're about to talk about was instrumental in determining that those cathode rays were actually rays, they were actually particles and uh, were named ended up being named electrons. All right, so at any rate, um, we've got this, um, this charged particle. Charged particle is enter entering a magnetic field that's into the paper. Um, let me turn my pen on here so that I don't draw when I don't mean to. I'll choose, uh, I don't know, maybe a different color. Uh, how about green? It doesn't look like green to me, whatever. Uh, charged particle is, is entering this magnetic field. And of course, what's gonna happen as soon as it enters the field, um, it's gonna end up with a force on it that's directed upwards. Okay, and that force specifically is a force due to the magnetic field. All right, now this, this uh, question here that we've got on the screen um, poses kind of a scenario of, all right, we've got this thing um, entering this magnetic field that's upwards. Um, let's say that we applied an electric field as well. Um, well, what should the strength of the electric field be and how should it be oriented um, so that I've got no deflection of this charged particle? So that, you know, instead of having this thing go in a circle or even just deflect from a straight line, so that instead it's, it's moving along a, um, a straight path. All right, so if I think about this, and how might I do this? Well, if I've got a force that's upwards due to the magnetic field, um, then what do I want? I, I, I want another force to balance that out so that there's no deflection. So I want a force that's downwards that's caused by an electric field. All right, awesome. Um, hmm. So I want those two forces to balance. If those two forces balance, then I will have no acceleration. I'll have no deflection at all. Um, so let's just go ahead and write that out. My force due to my electric field has got to be equal to my force due to my, uh, force due to magnetic field has got to be equal to force due to electric field. Equal, there we go. Um, and we know these, Q, V, B, Okay, why did I get rid of the sine theta? Well, I got rid of the sine theta because the velocity and the magnetic field are perpendicular to each other. They're at a 90 degree angle. And the sine of 90 degrees, what's the sine, sine of 90 degrees? The sine of 90 degrees is one. All right. So on the left-hand side of this equation here, QVB uh, now is equal to, what's the force due to an electric field? Well, it's Q times E. All right, and we're just dealing with magnitudes here, so I'm gonna put absolute value signs around the Q. Oh, if I look at this then, Q on both sides, the Q's cancel, VB equals E. All right, um, so that means that if I have some particle that I, and I've got the electric field set up um, in such a way um, that E divided by B is equal to that particle's speed, um, then that particle is not going not to deflect at all. It'll go along a straight line path. And this right here is um, how I need to, is the ratio I need for um, electric field in comparison to magnetic field in order to have no deflection for a charged particle. All right, so that's Great, um, and that's um, maybe an equation that we should hold on to for our homework, possibly. Um, so let's see, how should I actually orient the electric field? Well, um, if I could figure out how my PowerPoints work, I could tell you. All right, so I should orient it um, in such a way, uh, you know, it, in the same way I've got the picture um, down there at the bottom of the screen, um, which if we look at this, what do we see? Um, we see that our electric field is directed downwards. And well, this makes sense if we think about the direction of the force. 
that we needed we needed a downwards force to counteract the upwards um, force due to the magnetic field. My Q is positive. If I want a downwards force, then I need an electric field that's downwards, so that I'll end up with a force that's downwards. Good enough. All right, I'm going to break right now, and we'll come back and we'll talk some more in the next video.